And then there are people who don't understand how much they are or what they are, and it's kind of finding that in between. <coughs> it's like, how much is bullshit? How much is real? Mm -hmm. I'll have people all the time tell me, oh, Eric, you know, Postmona Press, you've had such a great reputation, and you're so this, and you're so that. And I'm like, I'm just a guy who hopes to God I sell enough books that I can pay the electric bill. Yeah, on it. people think I'm rich. And, <laughs> but then true. you get people that are like, <laughs> crazy. oh, I was an Amazon bestseller. Jessica was an Amazon bestseller for 14 days. And, and you need rich. to buy her books so she can pay the electric bill. Yeah. You know, number, number one YA horror and rabbits in the garden for like three days. Woo! It's been like number one or number two on Goodreads for like two years, like number one YA. So. But you know, we have a, a book called Flesh Trap. It's at our table. It's got a, a fly in a Venus flytrap. It's the back and forth between the number one or the number five um, gay horror story in Amazon. Well, I can tell you we've sold about 20 copies of that book. Uh -huh. So when someone tells you, and, and that's not a bad thing, yeah. you know, we have expectations. That's not a bad thing. But when someone tells you, I'm an Amazon bestseller, Yay. that doesn't really mean much because they parse it down into so many different categories. This book, Fear the Abyss, was the number one seller when I sold it for 99 cents for a while. Number one body horror anthology for 99 cents. Well, it's because it was 99 cents. And it's awesome. It's a great book. When you sell a book for 99 cents as an ebook, yeah. I get 34 cents. Yeah. 34 cents. You can't even get a cup of coffee for 34 yeah, cents. Yeah, the, the collection I self published, I, I really thought it was going to do pretty well. The virtuoso? I mean, yeah, yeah, I think I sold 27 copies oh, all together. Such a, that is such a kick ass book. Yeah, maybe You put so much work into it. <laughs> so, Drawing all those terrible, terrible was, illustrations. No, you didn't even draw them. It was, I drew some. You drew some of them, but it was like you farmed them out to, yeah, to the, the I thought that that was going to work. I thought that that was going to be a really good ploy because. You know, people would fans would send in their illustrations, then they would tell their By friends and parents, I have an illustration in this man, that did not happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was just straight up wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I wish that other so people cool. not, not to say you should have I wish that on other people. Yeah. But I wish other people realized that's the way it is. There are a lot of small presses if uh, I know some of you out here are writers, there are small presses that will tell you they'll publish your story and then not pay you for your story and then make you buy your own buy a copy of that book yeah, that's and what they're counting on isn't that it's going to be a number one bestseller in an amazon list which hey i'm happy to have they're counting on making money from you but you're the author so if when a jessica book sells jessica makes money and i make money and everybody's happy jessica makes more money than i make because her she sells a lot of books that's okay. <laughs> well, a moderate <laughs> amount of books. <laughs> yeah. Nobody sells a lot of books. Yeah. But the idea that I'm, I'm going to be the only one making money is out there. You'll see a lot of it. There'll be a lot of anthologies and journals that will say uh, payment is exposure. No, exposure is when you go outside in 10 degree weather naked. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. exposure. And you can die from it. Yeah. Even if it's a copy of the book and $5. Yeah. Get something from your writing. I mean, because small presses, we run on a shoestring budget. We can't always afford. We uh, have a new journal, Jean Vu. Each issue costs us about $2,500. And that means we have to sell. And they only sell for $3. Ebook, $3 at paperback. $5 here and $7 online. So do the math. How many of those do we have to sell to actually make $2,500? About 2000 About 2000 to break even. It's a good thing it's awesome, though. Mm. So hopefully uh, it catches on. It better. It but that's but that's why we uh, but that's why we're selective. Gary can tell you we get he's among the thousands that yeah. That's not, I'm zero for two, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? Well, no, Jessica's one for two. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> but they uh, <clears throat> well, because we are willing to pay people and give them a copy of the book, and we pay what's considered professional rates for that particular book. Which is five cents a word. Woo! woo. Yeah. <laughs> then it, uh, <laughs> it it adds up. But all of a sudden, people oh, they're gonna pay me more than five dollars for my story. Oh man! And we get flooded. Yeah. 
We yeah, really push. Yeah, 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 man. When you're writing twenty or you're getting twenty five dollars for writing dwarf porn, I'll go after it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> write dwarf porn all day. Well, we, it was pretty fun. Well, yeah, we published, <laughs> and we publish poetry too, which means we get lots of really bad poetry. There was twenty five cents a word for poetry, not a word. Twenty five cents a line. <laughs> Those are, I like those. Oh, look, a whole. That writes you a haiku. Here, here's a whole page of material that we published, and it cost me five dollars. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Haikus. Yeah, I don't know how we pay those. <laughs> it's like, gee, how many? Use how big many? words because it's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll pay you by the syllable. Yeah. We'll pay you by the syllable. But uh, so we've done all the talking, mm. and there's 20 minutes left. So now it's up to you guys. Mm. Um, this is something that you guys have already slightly touched on. I know Jessica from your beautiful organized board thing that you have posted <laughs> the pictures of, and also just from what you were saying with how you know you do take more time because you are a man who wears many many hats. Uh, what are your thoughts on the idea of juggling multiple projects? Because I know that's something like in with within writer based communities, it's kind of a controversial topic that I read a lot about. Some authors say, you know, no, you need to stay focused on your main one and, you know, maybe have a side one here or there. And other ones go, no, I have 75 videos <laughs> at the same time and I give them all equal attention. Bullshit. What are you guys' thoughts on that? You're, um, you're the closest yeah. one to that in this room. Yeah, I mean, I definitely work on, on multiple things. Um, one, because I, I enjoy it and um, I, I just like to. I just enjoy bouncing around into different worlds because, I mean, it makes my work seem like le less of work, and it's more playtime because I get to play in different playgrounds and, and and play a lot of different characters, and it makes it a lot more fun for me. Um, but it is definitely something I had to train myself to do. Um, it you know, st I started off with like two things at once, then three, then four, and they definitely um, it depends on on the stories. Uh, I'll usually work on one novel at once. Um, like write a novel, be editing a novel, and then maybe a couple of short stories here and there that are in different stages. Um, and then I might type something else. Uh, it's, it's definitely hard, but the way that I do it is it's, I try to make each story so different you know, that I'm not, like, getting, I'm not getting confused. Although, and this happened at the writer's retreat when I was, I was working on something and then realized I was writing in first person instead of third person. And I was like, well, guess that means I gotta go get my other book. Because, you know, if my mind tells me I should be writing in first person, that means I need to move, switch projects. So it's kind of, and, and if I didn't have those boards, I mean, I would, I would lose my mind. I, it's definitely, so it's, it's something I choose to do, but it's also something I feel like I have to do in order to make money. <laughs> you know, if I just focused on, on the novel, this, I mean, January to February, I did pretty much just focus on one of the Dark Decker books, because I was trying to pump it out super fast. But um, at this point, where I need to be making money to, so my husband doesn't cast me back into the pit of <laughs> real, real. Send work. you back to pit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the quiet moment at dinner. It's like you know the car wash is looking for some help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like it's definitely my biggest. You don't fear. think I don't slow down when I go past the day labor place? <laughs> yeah. You know, if, they, if you didn't have to be there at five thirty in the morning, that might be its place. I mean. <laughs> and I mean, it is. It's just like a dedication thing. I can, I can. If I see a call for something that's like two thousand words, fifty bucks, done. And I'm like, okay, I'll take my afternoon and just do it real quick, and then go back to whatever yeah. I was working on. So for me, it is definitely something that. I had to train myself to do, so I definitely don't recommend anyone just jumping into it. four <laughs> projects at once. That would be pretty evil. You probably lose your mind quickly. Well, I mean, you have to, and it's it, uh, again what she said earlier. It's something that you kind of have to train yourself to do. I mean, you just don't dive in because you will be in a fetal position while crying. And that will happen somewhere. sometimes. And it will Even absolutely. If you're <laughs> you know, so. You know, I, I get up very early every day, and there's always opportunities throughout the course of the day and in the evening and stuff. If uh, you know, if I, if I have a moment at work um, at an undisclosed location, um, <laughs> like I, I eat lunch by myself at work, and I'll grab a notebook and I'll go sit sit out and I'll just start writing stuff, or I'll start plotting something for uh, the podcast that I do, the, the Wicked Library, which most of you have been on. <laughs> 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 but, uh, 
I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of time-consuming stuff. But you know, like Jess said, it's work, but it's fun work. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if we didn't love doing it, we wouldn't do it as frequently as we do. It's like anything else. If you like to chew gum, we chew off on gum throughout the course. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, I I like getting that indentation in my hand when I'm uh, been writing for a while. My callus is so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So like one big overdeveloped finger. Yeah. You yeah. have yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> That's from driving in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think organization definitely is is key. I mean, a lot of people use Scrivener and and stuff like that to organize projects. And awesome. I for me, if it's not in my face. It's, it's out of my mind, so, I mean, I have to have well, everything listed. Well, I've, I've gotten into, I mean, I'm still pretty archaic with my writing, so I have, like, packs of post-it notes in random. When I was writing Demons, Dolls, and Milkshakes, uh, the one character, uh, Stu, has an arm torn off. And when I was writing it, like, the way I write is if, you know, I get it all out, and then I will go back and see where my continuity issues are and stuff. But the one thing that kept screwing me up was that I couldn't remember which arm oh I torn off. I played that game so, so many times. And it so I started leaving, I started leaving post-it notes at my desk, and my you know, my wife was like, "What's this one?" I'm like, "Stu is missing his left arm," <laughs> you know, and underlined and highlighted and stuff. And she's like, "Fuck is Stu?" I'm like, "Don't just leave it there. Don't don't take it down." I have people's <laughs> birthdays written all over the writing hut. Just trying to remember what people's birthdays are. Like characters just make a little birthday. paper doll of your character and rip the left arm. Yeah, that would be Or a oh, yeah. I definitely started writing a book where I killed off a character in the third book, and he was totally in the fourth book. <laughs> <laughs> For like three chapters. And I'm like, eh, let's change this to someone else. It's like, and then she woke up and it was all in a dream. Yeah. <laughs> That's my still so my brother. You, you think you get accused of things now. What, what if that actually happened? Yeah. <laughs> oh. I will say yeah. there there is a challenge as a reader. There's a challenge to that. So this wonderful book in the middle here called Pins. If you like serial killers and strippers, and you don't mind, who doesn't? And you don't mind um, a little bit of foul language and drug use. Who doesn't? Um, and who does? That would be the book for you. When I read that book to determine, I knew I was going to publish it because Jessica was our bestseller at the time. It's like. Unless it's real crap. It's like, I've never read it. Was crap. But there are a lot of strip. There are a lot of stripper names in this book, and I can see where that would be a challenge because yeah. Diamond and Destiny. and Destiny. Destiny's the stripper that looks like me, so that's why she dies real early. She's hairy. <laughs> She's short, round, and hairy. Yeah, and she has a cesarean scar, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that I don't. Yeah. 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 scar, no, she but. but, but but uh, she is hot. But the <laughs> idea is that all these women have these names, bars. and they all sound the same. So how do you know? Is it Diamond or is it Dixie or is it yeah. Destiny? And you know, and then there's Etheria. No, Etheria is not in there. But you know, in the Chandomir and the Champagne, room. <laughs> and you can really get lost in that. And I think that's you got to keep track of that. It's like, damn it, didn't we kill her? No, that was Destiny. Diamond is the main. Man. Who is it they buy the drugs from? I don't know. Yeah, see, she's like, see, she wrote it, but you're, that was like eight books ago. Yeah, I have no idea. I forget who we're, we were. We were talking about rabbits in the garden. I yes. cannot remember the sister's name for the life of me, and it's it's Natalie. alliterative, Natalie Norton. So I should remember that. But yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> Well, I was doing the thing on, on my Facebook because I had to name 11 characters, and I was like, oh man, so I just started looking through Facebook and stealing surnames. I don't even remember all my cousins' names. I can't yeah. imagine the characters that you've written so many of them. And it's, it's, it's a, a young adult series, so there's a, a show choir, the Fairmount 15, and I realized I only had three characters I'd mentioned, and I was like, shit. I was like, even if I never mention the last names of these characters, like, I need to have a whole list of their names and what grade they're in. It's and Billy and Bobby Tagarian. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, 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 borrowed your, I borrowed your last name Did from you? one of the characters in there. Cause, Sweet! Because I'm like, oh, I need to find your last name. Yeah. And I think I was, I think I was in the middle of uh, reading Fear the Abyss, actually. <laughs> nice. And I was reading Extraction, and I'm like, Thank you. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That'll work. Well, I know I, I, in Rabbits in the Garden, there's a Dr. Yingling, and I have two friends <laughs> that are Sam and, and Sam and Travis Yingling, and they're like, hey, saw my name in your book. Why'd you make me the rapey doctor? Because doctor. So, yeah. I was drinking a beer. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, right. You just happened to be on Facebook at the time, Robin. Like, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, there are, because we uh, publish Billy. dark fiction, I see a lot of a lot of character names that are movie star names. Mm. Um, there's a book called Necromancer. One of the characters' the last name is Foree. Yeah, it's Ken so Furry. It's Ken Furry. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the author gave Ken Furry a copy of that book. I doubt if he read it, but yeah. he was I like, so. was like, hey, yeah. and you'll find characters named Mosley and Haig. Uh, Mosley? Were you guys named Mosley? Yeah, <laughs> Mosley, Mosley. Uh, but but you can see the influence, even the influence of some of these events. We have a book coming out called Saturday Night of the Living Dead, and it's uh, it's sort of a uh, an homage to people that do practical effects, and Tom Savini's in that book, sort of. But the whole idea of the influence, what's around you, and it's the ones that you write about what you know are the ones that come out mm -hmm. the best. Not that you know, I mean, what do you know about the Jersey Devil and dolls that come to life? You don't want to know. Funny. Yes. Yeah. More than I can yeah. explain. Read the book. <laughs> Read the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's all real. I, I don't know, I just made up everything about strippers. So. Yeah, Rabbits in the Garden's a whole different one. I don't know. <laughs> None of us here were alive in 1959. Yeah, so. I just asked. I had to interview my my parents and my relatives for that one because they all grew up in Martha's Vineyard in the 1950s, 1960s. So I was just like, "Tell me everything you know. I'll put it in this book." <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds right. <laughs> so that four years later, someone will go on Amazon and flame Tear you. Tear it apart. <laughs> yeah, there's a review of Rabbits in the Garden that says this woman didn't do any research. Condoms weren't available then. And I'm like, condoms were available. Yeah, sure. Like, in Spartacus 60s. used the yeah. condom yeah. for us. <laughs> you know, they weren't available then? I'm like, I'm you pretty sure. About? And no, I mean, like, I know I looked that up because I was confused about I was like, did phone books exist? And like, I, every, I just questioned were everything. Were there people existence. in that here? Yeah, I did. I was just like, Mom, yeah, tell cars. me about the Great Depression. Yeah, I was like, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm wrong. Gee, honey, you know what I'm saying? She just like, I was not born. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like Avery was pissed because she got sent to the asylum before she could check her DVR and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, and, and that's that's what's funny because in Pins, I had a good friend of mine edit it before I even submitted it, and she was just like, uh, you know, there's a, there's a part where they're all in a house towards the end of the book and, and messed up stuff is going on, and she's like, Jessica, everybody would be calling the police. Everybody has a cell phone. What's wrong with you? <laughs> And it was like everybody would be on Facebook, everyone would be Twittering, and I was just like, shit, cell phones. <laughs> no I was like, in my mind, it's still like 1996. Or, you, go to e you can go to eBay and buy this little box, it's about this big, it takes batteries and it jams everyone's cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, yeah, she would just point out the most <laughs> obvious house, things, and she would just write, really? And that's very hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> like that's worse than being like, no, this you know, I gotta switch it to this. Really? <laughs> well, we have a, 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 another where that happened and we fixed it. It's a book called Truly Deeply Disturbed. It's on the table. Ten, Twelve dollars. It's about a, a, a man who kills people because people need killing. I, it's like I kill people because people are assholes. So he's sort of like Dexter, except. He doesn't go after criminals, he just goes after really Anybody. rude, nasty people. He goes after assholes. Yeah. He goes after assholes. I'd be so dead. But there's a little girl involved, and he adopts this little girl within a month. I'm like, no, 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 no. That takes years. Yeah. So we worked a way around that, because that would just throw you out of the story. Mm -hmm. It's like watching a TV show, and someone's phone number is 555 yeah. I'm out of that story. Yeah. It's like, make up something. but. Five 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 one two one two. That's directory assistance, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got the four one. And that's what editors are for. That's right. That's why you need an editor because you get too close to a story, you don't even see those things at yeah, all. Absolutely. I mean, you you have to. That's why editors come in real handy. Like you can't. It's like your kid. It's like well, my kid's fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, my <laughs> kid's a little shit. Yeah. And keep taking my kid's lunch. She's an angel. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. She's she's like, great. You it's, can't deny her. It's like you cannot. You really can't be that objective about it. I'm, I mean, you can be objective about it, but you have to leave it alone for like a year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, what the fuck was I thinking when it's, I wrote this? this it's ugly shit. baby syndrome. Everyone's yeah. baby is beautiful, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you look at it, your kid, you know, hey, all of your kids, my kids are perfect. All, every, every one of them. You know. <laughs> but they. Uh, 
you look at them, you don't know. Someone else has to look at them. Except that, that kind of tends to wear off over time when you read like a, a story that you wrote several years ago and you're like, oh, this shit is ugly. 